Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the one more problem on frequent FP growth tree, guys. Okay? Yes. Okay. So in this question, they gave four transactions. They also gave the minimum support with the confidence, guys. So in our last lecture, we seen only with the support count, right? Yes. So in this lecture, let us learn along with the confidence how you can solve it, right? Yes. So this is the question given. So if possible, please take a piece of paper. Guys, I'll be explaining from the papers only directly. Okay. Yes. So note down the values. Cross check whether you are writing correctly or wrongly. Also. Okay. Yes. So let us start. Okay. So initially, you will be writing the same transactions with the both conditions which he gave. Minimum support and minimum confidence. So basically, even minimum confidence is given, it will not be used until you solve the whole problem, guys. Right? Yes. So initially, we will be writing all the frequencies. Okay. So our support is a forty percent, whereas here we got one situation where it is a twenty-five percent because I four is used only once in I one, whereas it is not used anywhere else, which led to one by four, that is twenty-five percent. Right? Yes. Okay, so now we have selected I one, I two, I three, and I five, right? Yes. So I one, I two, I three, and I five. So luckily, all are having exactly three three times, guys, in the whole thing, right? Yes. Okay. So once we got that, okay. So now, as usual, we will be updating the list in terms of order, right? So here, I took the order as I one, I two. Okay. So I think just give me a second. I took the order as I two, I three, I five, and I one. So I took I two, I three, I five, and I one. So this is the order which I have selected. Okay, yes. So basically, the order which you will be selecting is it should be in this format, guys. So whatever letter or whatever number you are taking first, it should be in the maximum thing, sir. Here we can have only in maximum three. So come consider the next step. So in the next step, at least one or two should match. So in that way, right? Yes. Okay, so I took this after some assumptions because if you observe, even here I have cutted, I striked off multiple times, right? Yes. So because of that confusion only, right? So at the end I settled, I think so at two, three, five, one. Okay. Yes. So now write everything in that particular order, guys. Okay. So once you write, you can start inserting. Okay. So I hope everyone remembers how you can insert, right? Yes. If not, you just watch the previous lecture, guys. Okay. Yes. So after inserting, at the end you'll be getting a result like this, guys. Okay. So if you recall, after this step, we filled three tables, right? So the first table is for conditional pattern, the second is for conditional FP tree, and the last one is for patterns, right? Yes. So now let us fill both two tables in a single table, guys. Okay? Yes. So the conditional path is nothing but for I one. So for I one, there are two different paths. The first path is starts at I two, I five, I three with the value one. I two, I three, I five with the value one, and I three with the value one. I three with the value one. Exactly. For I three, how many ways can you go? Only one way. That is I two, I five with the value two. I two, I five with the value two. Okay. Similarly, for I five, how you can go? For I five, you can go directly from I two with a value three. I two with the value three and the last one will never or the top one will never have value dash. Okay, we filled this part. So now let us go through conditional. So conditional is nothing but which is having the maximum value will be taking it, guys. So here we are having I three one and here also we are having I three one. So at the end I three two, right? Done. Here we are having both as a two, so both are equal. Here we are having only one, so that will be coming here. Yes. So we are done with here. So now make a combination so with this with this. So it will form I one I three. Here it will form I two I three I five I three I two I five I three. Here I two I five, right? So that is what I think I have written here. Okay, yes. So we filled it here. Okay. So till here the exact things are everything is same, guys, right? Yes. So now the small changes will start. So now you will be considering the confidence values, guys. Okay. So in confidence values, you will be taking the values of The maximum set which you have selected, guys. Okay, so just give me a second, guys. Okay, so we will be taking these values. So if you observe here, the occurrence of I two, sorry, I three and I one is a two, I two and I three is a two, I two and I three is a two, I two and I five is a three, right? So we will be taking these values here. So first, let us take this value. So I one and I three. So what are all the combinations, guys? I one, I three, I one, I three. So I one I three will never have a value because it will lead to five, right? So here it will be I three. So better I will be solving this on paper because this is the first time we are doing confidence here, right? Yes. 
okay so for i1 i3 okay so you will be taking i1 i3 i1 and i3 so i1 and i3 will never have value because it will lead to 5 and this opposite is i3 and this opposite is i1 so you will be drawing implies in between and you will be solving it okay so always the denominator will be i1 here and here i3 so what is the denominator for i1 guys i1 is in how many situations just give me a second i will be removing this paper also okay yes so i have removed it okay so i1 is in how many transactions is my question okay yes so i1 is in two transactions guys so here it is there and here also it is there so it is in two transactions so here it will be by two and i3 is in how many transactions one two and three so it is in three transactions so denominator will be three and here for numerator i1 and i3 are combinedly in how many transactions one two in two transactions so it is a two by two and similarly three and one are combinedly in how many transactions one two this is also only two so here we got a hundred percent accuracy confidence here we got 66.66 guys okay similarly you can continue for rest also so two two three five two three i'll be just skipping it for now so two two three i five two two sorry five two three two two five so you can just solve them and you'll be getting the confidence scores so basically i think in question they gave only confidence as 50 percent so here in this situation everyone has satisfied guys so we got 100 percent or 66.66 okay yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea about the concepts of this a priori algorithm and fp growth algorithm right yes i think right yes so in the next lecture we'll be going through one more type of method which is vertical solving guys so minimum frequent item set using a vertical data formatting okay so instead of using rows and columns you will be using only vertical data right yes so once you are going through the example you will be having a clear idea guys don't worry about it okay so let us meet in the next lecture and discuss about it okay thank you thanks for watching